the exemplars. Now he moves to the exemplar argument. How many times have you heard me make the exemplar argument? I made it against classical theist, made it against other Thomists because it's absurd. The exemplars are identified in Thomism and in most of Roman Catholicism with the essence of God. Augustine says this even. But the exemplars of created things, the patterns, principles, and archetypes of all the created things are not identical to the essence of God. The essence of God is absolutely simple and undifferentiated. It's a perfect unity, right? And so if created things are based in the essence of God for their patterns and archetypes, then all things are no, nothing but reflections and manifestations of the essence of God, which is impossible. And thus all, if you're consistent with that, you would actually believe in Maya. You would believe that distinctions in the world are actually illusory because there's no such thing as chairness, right? The chair doesn't have an archetype in the essence of God. The essence of God is not like any created thing. Moses says this, does he not? Right? Not only does Moses say this, Paul says this in Acts 17 when he goes and he talks to the philosophers battling Hellenic philosophy. Acts 17 is completely a refutation of Hellenic presuppositions. He says, the divine nature is not like anything created. It's not like gold and silver and things in, in temples. That's idolatry. What does Roman Catholicism say? Creatures are analogs to the essence of God. You're an idolater. Now, I know that they say that, yeah, but it's not a perfect analogy to the essence of God. It's not an analogy to the essence of God at all. There's no creatures that are like the essence of God. That's why we are in perfect continuity with Moses. When Moses sees God and experiences God, he experiences the goodness of God. It's made explicit in Exodus. God says, I'm not going to show you my face. It would kill you, but I will show you my goodness. Is the goodness of God created? No, it's not. The goodness of God is uncreated. Go read Dionysius. Next, he begins to say, all right, I'm going to, let's argue not just from the Logi of St. Maximus, because St. Maximus writes at length in Ambiguum 7, which we will cover in part two, uh, on the uncreated energies, the uncreated Logi. He says, uh, creatures reveal to us those Logi, but they're, they're not identical. Creatures are not identical to the exemplars, and the exemplars are not the essence of God. This is very key. And Maximus is unambiguous about that, hence the Ambiguum. <laughs> number seven, where he covers this issue, the Logi, right? Uh, therefore, it is absurd and stupid to identify the exemplars with the essence of God, which classical theist still does. Uh, then he moves on to say that God uh, may have done many other works beyond the works that we know. He has energies that we don't know. Because scripture says he has many, many, many infinite works. We will never exhaust the works of God. And who does he cite for that? St. Basil. St. Basil says God has many, many works, and he has even more works that we don't even know. And I'm sure, oh, you're making up those quotes. Those are all made up. Those are all made up. All of this is referenced. So let's give you the citations. This is against Eunomius chapter 2. To cite uh, Maximus, it is Ambiguum 7. And it is Maximus against Thalassios, chapter 13. There you go. Go look these up. Write these down and look them up, liars. You're making those quotes up. Next he moves uh, to, so Barleyon moves on. He says, all right, look. Maybe uh, the, the grace itself isn't created. It's actually uncreated. So Barlium moves his position, and now he says that, no, we really do participate in theosis. We really do. And we're really getting divinity. But that divinity is uncreated. And this is what you'll see the Roman Catholics do. They get so confused, they will literally flip back and forth and say both things. Within the same debate, they'll say the, the same. No, 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 you're really getting a, a supernatural created grace. The grace itself is created. And then like five minutes later, they'll be like, well, you are participating in the divine nature and deification. You're really being deified, and it's it's the divine nature. Is the divine nature a supernatural creature? No. So, 
St. Gregory calls out Barlium here, and he says, uh, "You earlier you said that it was a creature, and now you're saying it's uncreated. And then he says that uh, if you were consistent, you would adopt atheism because absolute divine simplicity actually cuts God off from being imminently present in this world. Exactly. It removes the imminent energies of God, and it makes God a cut-off being who only interacts through created effects in this world. That's what every Thomas will tell you. Yeah, okay, if that's the case, then that leads to atheism. We don't actually know. We never interact directly with that God. And in fact, all we have are created analogs, which are supposed to tell us these different attributes. How do you know if you're experiencing mercy as opposed to foreknowledge, as opposed to justice, as opposed to love, as opposed to punishment, as opposed to wrath? You don't. So you never know because this God is cut off from this world. If all we ever experience is created effects, how is there an incarnation? A real incarnation. The second person of God had really became incarnate in time and space. He's not just a created effect. It's not just a notional virtual incarnation. It's not just a conceptual incarnation. That's why you're a heretic. God is wholly present in each energy, and therefore there is not parts to God. Was